My boyfriend and his friends trapped me in a house and assaulted me. I met my boyfriend in college last year. We had the same class and during class I would always catch him staring at me. At first it was a little creepy, but once we started talking I realized how charming he was. One day he came up to me and just started asking me about where I was from. And right away I got these butterflies in my stomach. He was really attractive. And I could tell that the girls in our class all looked at him a certain way too. He asked me out on a date and I said yes, but when some of my friends found out that I was going on a date with him, they started telling me things. One of my friends told me that there was a rumor going around that he had assaulted another girl. I just couldn't picture him being that way. He didn't seem capable of anything like that. Later on that day, I got a message from another girl telling me the same thing. And when I asked her information about the girl he supposedly assaulted, they told me that they didn't remember her name. That apparently she just left school after it happened. After I heard about the rumors that he had assaulted a girl, I asked for evidence and nobody had any. Nobody even remembered the name of the girl. So I decided to go on the date with him. He took me on a picnic and at first it was really nice. He had asked me what some of my favorite foods were and he brought them all with him. He brought hummus and cherry tomatoes and chips, but five minutes into to the picnic he grabs me and kisses me now i'm not saying that i didn't want to be kissed i just didn't want it to happen so quickly and he didn't even ask me for permission which looking back now was the first red flag after that he couldn't keep his hands off of me i never said no so he just kept going he kept touching my shoulder and my legs and he would lean in and kiss me every now and then by the end of the day i was into it the rest of the relationship he was always a little bit aggressive he never asked me if i wanted to do anything he would just do it a week after we started dating he introduced me to his friends one of them jokingly asked my boyfriend when it was his turn to take with me that's when one of his friends asked him when it was his turn to take with me. And although he was joking, it was disgusting. My boyfriend laughed though. He thought it was so funny. Mind you, this is the first time I'm ever meeting his group of friends. After that, there were a few incidents. On one occasion at a party, one of his friends forced me to dance with him for three minutes. All the while, he kept grabbing my waist and my butt. Finally, my boyfriend came back and I told him and he just laughed. Another time we were at the beach and one of his friends came up behind me and undid my bikini top. Essentially, I flashed everyone. Stuff like that kept happening until the night of the incident. We're all walking back from a club when we stopped at a house. It looked abandoned my boyfriend insisted that we all go in. I said no, but he finally convinced me. And as soon as we get into the house, my boyfriend tells me that I need to run. He looks so serious that I actually ran up the stairs. Then I could feel all of them chasing me. One of them grabbed my shirt and ripped it. And I got into one of the rooms. I tried to close the door, but they opened it. And another one grabbed my hair and pushed me up against a wall. He started trying to kiss me, but I bit him. I ran into another room and one of them was already there. He tripped me and when I fell to the ground, he grabbed my neck. Then he started saying that I've been teasing them this whole time. I finished tearing my shirt and took it off. I was screaming at the top of my lungs at this point. Another one of the guys came in and I was able to get up and run they chased me around the house for what seemed like an eternity but it was probably only 30 seconds and that's when i realized that the only person i hadn't seen was my boyfriend and i remembered the rumors about my boyfriend having assaulted a girl i realized that it was true and that i was just his next victim only this time his friends were involved as I'm hiding in a corner hoping that none of them find me, I hear footsteps walking towards me. I realize that this is probably where they had brought the other girl to assault her, and that they knew every corner of this house so there was no way for me to hide. Suddenly I feel someone grab my elbow and pull me up. It was the friend that had torn my shirt and told me that I was teasing them. Immediately he pins my arms behind me and starts trying to kiss me. Then he actually said that I should be flattered because they all find me so beautiful, and that the more I fight back, the funner it is for them. Suddenly, I hear my boyfriend yell stop, runs up the stairs and into the room. At this point, the other three guys were in the room, just watching the other one kiss me. Then he said the joke is over, he grabs me and takes me out of the house. That's when I turn to him and say that the rumors were true this whole time. Then he grabbed me by the shoulders, looked me in the face, and said that she had wanted it, and that his friends and him were just joking around in the house. He dropped me off at my dorm, and the next morning, I woke up with bruises and hickeys all over my body. I reported it to the school, but they've done nothing. My my boyfriend keeps swearing that it's a joke. I blocked him, but he keeps showing up at my door. He's being sweet and even sending me groceries. I'll keep you guys updated. Story time about when I messed up by opening my fiance's DMs. First, the discovery. I had a rough day and my fiance's algorithms are top notch, so I was scrolling through his apps to entertain myself, hoping for a pick me up. I opened his Instagram and noticed that he had a couple new DMs. We don't snoop through each other's phones, but we also don't hide anything either. Or so I thought. So I clicked on them just to see if they were important because he doesn't check Insta often. Well, I see DMs from a deleted account, thus sparking my interest. So I click and I scroll. Messages go years back. Maybe 20 to 30 messages total. Some winky faces, some slightly sexual memes, and a few photos of lingerie. Nothing outright incriminating, but who is this bitch? My heart dropped. We're getting married in less than five months. These messages aren't okay. He's not a cheater. Never once have I ever questioned that, nor has he given me any reason to. I start to see red. Now, the confrontation. I put on my big girl pants, wipe my tears, and storm into the bathroom. Rip open the shower curtain, revealing this idiot's albeit gorgeous naked body. He, though quite startled, raises his eyebrows and smirks. Looking to join, he says, wrong move, buddy. I go off, you know, like a badass. He denies it, you know, like a liar. I hold his towel hostage and toss him his phone so he can see for himself. He scrolls and pulls off this wildly confused demeanor. I literally see the blood leave his face. He kind of just says, stuttering, 
but baby, I, I don't know. We go back and forth. He swears up and down he has no idea who this could be. I'm just as surprised as you are, he claims, criminally. So, I take his phone so I can quote this other woman for emphasis. I write in my best valley girl voice and scroll through the most recent received messages. I notice for the first time, inconveniently so, a picture she sent of a guinea pig. I think, aw, hell, I love guinea pigs. Then, I remember, I have seen this guinea pig before. Then I realize, she is me. I deleted all my social media almost a year ago. Neither of us remembered any of the messages we sent. I start laughing and happy crying. My fiance looks as if he just won the lottery and received the death penalty simultaneously. Now to the aftermath. Now we sit, both recently showered, debating whether or not we should welcome a guinea pig into our family. I am so embarrassed. He is so relieved. We are crazy, stupid, and so in love. Am I wrong for photoshopping my maid of honor's tattoos out of my wedding photos? So I, 32 female, got married two months ago to my husband, 35 male. We had a beautiful wedding and my childhood BFF, Jessica, 31 female, was my maid of honor. I had a themed wedding. My husband and I are both historians and we met because we were researching the same time period for a thesis, namely the 1800s in Great Britain, or popularly known as the Regency era. The fact that we both researched the same time period was practically the reason why we started dating, so we instantly loved the idea of a themed wedding set in the Regency era, as it was sentimental to us and a beautiful way to honor our beginnings. For my wedding, I personally paid for my wedding party's dresses, hair, and makeup. Now, Jessica has tattoos on her hands, legs, torso, and neck. I brought up her tattoos and asked her what she would prefer to do with them to stay on theme. She said she wishes to do nothing, and while she understands the theme is important to my husband and I, she was not going to cover herself up in any way as she didn't want to compromise herself. I was a little miffed, but I accepted this, since it's a fair boundary and so I didn't push it. Plus, gloves were an important part of the bridesmaid's attire, meaning most of her tattoos will be covered by the gloves itself, and it was really just the neck tattoos I was worried about, but the bridesmaid dresses had conservative necklines so it wouldn't be very conspicuous and so I thought I could just get over this and not worry. However, on the day of the wedding, Jessica's gloves were small instead of the big ones I expected the bridesmaids to wear and her dress's neckline did nothing to cover her tattoos as she had altered it last minute. I did not expect this and was kind of thrown off but after a while I stopped caring and was busy having the best day of my life. However, fast forward to a few weeks ago, I got back the first set of pictures for my wedding date and the pics with Jessica and them were jarring to say the least because of her tattoos. It was honestly so out of place that I had asked my photographer to edit the pictures to give them a more historic portrait-like look. I wanted a particular picture of my husband and I, our families, maid of honor and bridesmaids framed, but if anyone saw that picture, the first thing they would have noticed was Jessica's tattoos and not my husband and I. I really wanted this one particular picture to look like an actual portrait in 1810, so I went ahead and asked the photographer to digitally remove the tattoos. The post Photoshop pic came in the mail yesterday and I showed it to Jessica. I knew she would have gotten annoyed with this and I was ready to apologize sincerely, but also let her know that I won't be returning the picture. Jessica was very, very mad when she saw the pic and told me that this was a narcissistic and disrespectful thing to do and stormed out of my house. She was more mad than I expected her to be, so now I'm not sure if I was truly way out of line or just a little bit selfish. So am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for speaking to my Italian girlfriend's rude Italian-American family and embarrassing them? For a little backstory, due to my dad's job, we lived in Italy for three years when I was younger, so I speak Italian almost fluently. It's been a while, so I've lost some of it. Recently, I started dating a girl. She's great and I love her so much. I met her family a few nights ago for dinner. She warned me that the male side of her family is very big into being macho, into testing the boys the woman date, and are very big on taking pride in their Italian ancestry. I think besides the grandfather, however, they were almost all born in Bergen County, New Jersey, but whatever. It's nice to take pride in one's heritage. So, long story short, at dinner, they kept making jokes at my expense. I honestly would not call it bullying, just things about my height, beard, shaved head. They tried to make fun of my IT job too, but stopped once I told them my income. It was overall not a bad experience, but a not so pleasant one either. Anyway, her older brother kept pushing things, giving me exceptional amounts of shit for playing lacrosse in high school. Apparently, it's a sport for prissy rich kids and not manly like football or baseball. He ended his rant by saying, hey, we're just a big Italian family. We're allowed to tell it how we see it. And all of the family except my girlfriend laughed. So I, for the next minute, responded to everything they said in Italian. My girlfriend buried her head in shame. The grandfather laughed and everyone else kept looking at each other confused before telling me that they didn't speak Italian. I replied, then don't use your Italian heritage as an excuse to behave poorly when you can't even speak the language. They got mad, but the grandfather told them all that I was writing to be quiet. My girlfriend isn't mad. She was ashamed that her family dug so deep into me, not about my response. I think the grandfather likes me, but word from my girlfriend's sister is that all the men are furious. They think I'm a smart ass and I disrespected them in their masculinity in an unforgivable way. So, am I the asshole? Y'all been seeing that man on TikTok telling people in the store, if you tell me a scripture, I'll give you some money. And everybody's like, uh, and they can't name not one scripture. Yeah, we're going to stop that. So I'm about to start this new series called Bible Talk because I'm not happy now. You going to know your word. I'm going to help you with some Bible stories and we, we going to do this, okay? 
And for those of you who are like, I don't understand the Bible. Like, I just don't read it because I don't understand. Baby. Children's Bible. One-on-one Bible story times. Pictures. Plain. Simple. Get you one. Start reading. So the Bible story we're going to do today is about Jonah and the whale. If you don't know about Jonah and the whale, <laughs> this is about to get real interesting. So, boom, long story short, there was a man named Jonah, right? Boom, Jonah walked in on his business. Jonah was prophet. If you don't know what a prophet is, we'll talk about that in another TikTok. Okay, so, boom, God came to Jonah and God was like, listen, I need you to head to this city called Nineveh and I need you to warn the people I'm about to destroy them because they disobeying me, they worshiping other gods. Like, I need them to get it together because I'm about to show them who I am. Jonah, like... Baby, that don't have nothing to do with me. I'm about to hop on this boat and I'm going in the opposite direction because them disobeying you got nothing to do with me, God. They deserve to be punished. Go destroy their city. I'm finna get on this boat. So he gets on this boat. The boat starts rocking. Waves start getting crazy. It look like it's about to storm. They like, whoa, hold up. What's going on? So Jonah like, oh, God, like, I didn't listen to what God told me to do. Now he causing this storm to happen. So everybody on the boat looking at Jonah like, sir, you going to get off? Like, what's going on? Because we can't die because you didn't want to listen to God. So Jonah like, just throw me overboard. They pick up Jonah, no problem. Get off the boat. So they throw Jonah overboard. Jonah goes to the bottom of the sea. Baby, to the bottom. So at this point, Jonah's about to die. He's at the bottom of the sea. There's a storm going on. He's like, what in the world? God is like, you should just listen to me the first time, but whatever. I'm about to help you out. So God sends a whale to swallow Jonah. Yes, you heard what I said. He sends a whale to swallow the man. Jonah's sitting inside of the whale for three days and three nights. How? Don't know. Only God can do something like this. So he's sitting inside of this whale. God's like... So Jonah like, okay, God, like, oh, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. He cries out for help. He prays. And then the whale takes him to shore. And God is like, now go do what I said the first time. Go warn my people about what's about to happen to them. So at this point, I know Jonah's running to the city to go warn the people. He goes to the city. He warns the people. The people are like, oh, my God, no, God, please don't destroy our city. So they cry out for help. They fast. They pray. And God is like, you know what? I'll forgive you. I'm not going to destroy your city. You repented. Cool. I'm going to leave your city alone. At this point, Jonah's like, well, God, why did you send me over there if you were just going to forgive them anyway? And he's like, because I'm God and I'm gracious and I'm loving and I'm forgiving and I give chances. And who are you to tell me what to do and what not to do? All you need to do is listen what I tell you to do and you won't get swallowed by another whale. More little story. Just listen to God. I might die in 7 hours, and I'm not afraid. I 14M, have a bone disease known as MHE. It causes benign bone tumors to grow everywhere on my body. Although they aren't cancerous, they are very painful when they are near a nerve. A lot of these tumors have grown in my knees, fingers and ribs. You can probably guess there are a lot of nerves and muscles there that can be pinched and pierced. It hurts quite a lot. I am constantly at level 5 pain, scale of 1 to 10. I can only walk for up to 2 minutes, I can't write with a pen. If I couldn't type this post wouldn't exist lol, and I'm basically in agony. We have decided I will go for surgery to saw off some of the most painful tumors in my knee. Hopefully this will restore my ability to walk. The doctors have also decided we should remove two of my ribs, which have cracked due to the tumors. They'll be replaced with metal I think. There is a 20% chance of death with all these very complicated procedures, and of course a chance this surgery doesn't change anything, or even makes it worse. Rolling a less than six-sided dice to determine if I live or die. But to be honest, I don't really care what happens in this surgery. If it works, great, I can walk again. If it fails and my condition stays the same slash deteriorates, I've adapted to this disease enough. I can probably handle a few turns for the worst. And if I die, well, I suppose then there is no more pain. It feels wrong to feel okay about this, but I don't exactly care at this point. It's in fate's hands. In 7 hours, I'll be on the operating table that'll determine my destiny. When I was 15 years old, I was pressured into getting a Brazilian wax and then a man walked in on me um, halfway through that experience. So I thought I would tell you guys about it today because it was traumatizing and I need to trauma dump. I'm just going to start this off by saying I'm hairy, okay? <laughs> I, down there, it's not just a jungle. It's literally the whole entire Amazon. If I don't shave or wax or do anything down there, it looks like I'm wearing a pair of shorts. If there are any hairy people watching this, I feel like you'll know what I mean, okay? It's a situation. Anyway, I was 15, I went to go and get a bikini wax. Because again, a pair of shorts didn't... Swimming season. I didn't want to be wearing a pair of... Let's move on. So I go to my regular waxing place, but this time it's a new lady. And I say to her, hi, I'm just here to get a bikini wax. And she looks at me and she's like, a bikini wax? And I'm like, yes, please, just, just a little bit of hair off the... Well, when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit for me. 
cool. Um, and she looks at me and she goes, no, you know, boys don't like a lot of hair down there. So why don't we just take it all off? We'll do a Brazilian for you. And I was like, oh, me being a very non-confrontational, very anxious 15 year old. I was like, yeah, that's actually what I wanted. Yes, please. Uh, so, you know, she gets right into it. I'm lying there. Legs open, like a plucked turkey. She's ripping the hair out. Most painful experience of my whole entire fucking life. Okay, well, it gets worse. A man just walks in to the room. He just walks in. He looks at me. He looks at my vagine. He looks at me. He looks at the lady. He looks at my vagine. He leaves. He walks out. I'm still lying there, okay? My waxing lady sprints out of the room, down the hallway. I hear yelling, slightly redeeming for her. But you know what, she still loses a lot of points because... Anyway, apparently he thought that room was the bathroom, okay? Just keep in mind though, I am still lying there like a turkey. Still. <laughs> Open. 15 years old. Um, my bush has never been the same since. Rest in peace. Ah, uh, never been the same since. I have never been the same since. It's been brought to my attention that some of you guys don't know this. I was a dancer and I'm not talking like, oh, I took a few ballet classes here and there. No, I was a dancer dancer. Like I was a dancer dancer and not to brag, but I was pretty damn good. I mean, I was on the cover of some dance magazines. Uh, now here's the thing, as we all know, I don't dance on my TikTok account. For some reason, when I try to do like a TikTok dance, I just look absolutely horrible. However, I saw a trend going around today. It's like a duet, like a two person dance thing. And I want to do it so bad. I want to do it so bad. Unfortunately, my boyfriend, nobody tag him in this. God love him. We all know he's gorgeous. I swear the man has two left feet. He's not the best dance partner. He's a great life partner. So today, my challenge, I want to teach Luke this dance and I want to do this dance on TikTok so damn bad. So that's, that's my goal for today. Hopefully you guys get to see it. Wish me luck. Have a great day, everyone.